So today we are talking about three ways in which you can start investing as a beginner in South Africa. Basically three process I think can help you better understand investing and start investing for yourself. What wasting any time guys, let's get into this episode for Student Investor Podcast with Ivan Sambo. Hello everyone, as this intro said, my name is Ivan Sambo and today we are talking about three ways in which you can start investing. Basically, a different process to help you better understand investing, guys. So, I don't want this video or this episode to be too long, so I will, try, I will just jump straight into the process I believe will be easy or will make investing easy for all beginners. So, let's get into it, guys. And also, do remember, guys, that nothing I say constitute as financial advice. It's only for educational purposes and if you're looking for financial advice go speak to a registered financial advisor not me i'm not in that business so guys let's get started and look at the three ways to start investing the first one guys is finding a cheap and easy to use broker guys when we talk about a broker nowadays a broker is no longer like a company you go into directly or a bank or something nowadays majority of brokers are just apps meaning it's apps that you can download whether on apple store or google play store and download them into the phone and that app itself becomes your broker and will give you access into any market you want to invest into for the purpose of this video we're sticking to the JSE to make things much more simple so let's say if you want to invest into the JSE or even the New York Stock Market in South Africa we have a variety of up to let's say six are brokers that you can use basically apps that you can download into your phone that you can use to invest number one we have easy equity that you can download and use we have shift we have clarity by invest tech we have frank app we have fnp uh share zero do remember guys fnp share zero is not an app but it's a it's a widget that is built inside your fnp banking app number two and also we have netbank young investor which i'm not sure i've never used it i think as was a widget inside the netbank app i have never used it so i won't talk much about it number and we also have as well guys the broke stock app as well which you can use so when it comes to all these brokers out there you need to pick one that you want to use that you can use i always say number one the most important thing to do is pick one that is understandable that meaning it won't complicate your life majority of the ones i have mentioned here are not that much too complicated it's easy for you to download and just use them and number two you need to be able to find one that's also cheap what do i mean about cheap if you need to you need to be able because you're starting up not to pay too much in fees and commission that's why there's an article published by uh, uh, local frugal um, I think I'll put a link of the in the description of this video. you can go listen to it he does a very good job in creating a table or a template that calculate the fees of each of the brokers I've mentioned right here and no matter you can understand so let me run you guys through the fees that majority of the brokers charge they charge a platform fee majority of brokers is equity to charge a 25 friend per month brokerage fee uh frank app as well charges a five friend platform fee as well the broker fee platform fee sorry for that um i think those are the two one that charge a platform fee basically just to use their platform they charge you a fee is equity 25 friend per month per month um frank app is five frame so then we have what is called a brokerage fee a brokerage fee is basically another fee that you need to pay i don't need to explain it uh it's a fee you pay every time that you do a what you call it a transaction in the platform to buy those shares um easy equity charges around zero point two five per trade when i say pay trade pay every buy or sell you do inside is equity you are paying zero point two five of that specific trade you are doing to buy shares in the jse uh shift charges is zero point four percent pay trade as well uh, charity clarity by investec does not charge any brokerage fee uh goes with frank app uh fnp has zero 
Chad doesn't charge when you buy their own ETF and ETN, but they charge you 0 0.25 when you buy any other uh, ETF or ETN inside their widget or what they call it, FNB share zero. NetBank Young Money Investor charges you 0.25% per trade. Broke, uh, Broke stock charges between 0 0.1 to 0 0.3% percent per trade that you do and another thing as well that you need to look into when you are picking which broker to use is how much what's the bare minimum you need to use that broker right uh, because some brokers have set set a minimum amount that you must have in order to trade or invest into using them as your broker right the minimum amount of money you need to have so when you look into easy equity there's no minimum amount you need to trade because easy equity has frictional share ownership giving you access to invest into any shares you want without no minimum amount same with shift there's no minimum amount to trade same with clarity by invest tech there's no minimum amount frank so still the same thing no minimum amount same with fnp share zero a net bank young investors needs you to have 100 rand and frank needs you to have one rand so that's in terms of the minimum amount you need to use these brokers we are talking about so now when we go into uh, withdrawal fee right a lot of brokers guys i know this video is being too long and going to a lot of things but i want everyone beginning to invest to understand the fees they pay by this different brokers which are out there which is important because when you add up all this money that you pay guys it becomes too much so how what's the minimum what's the withdrawal fee brokers will charge your money to withdraw your own money that's the reality right you need to know that so how much is the withdrawal fee easy equity has no withdrawal fee you can withdraw your money easy equity without paying a withdrawal fee uh shift is a 35 friend withdrawal fee uh clarity by invest tech is a zero they don't charge you for withdrawal fee um Frank App charges you for a 10 rand after the first four withdrawal. Meaning with Frank App, the first four withdrawal you do, they are free. But after that, they charge you 10 rand for every withdrawal you do. Uh, FNP shares zero, they charge you 2% of the amount you are withdrawing. So if you are withdrawing, uh, let's say 100 rand, FNP is going to take 2 rand. So they take 2% of the amount you are drawing. A young uh, F net bank, young investor, there's no withdrawal fee. Uh, same wood, um, same wood. What do you call this? Uh, we broke stock. There's no withdrawal fee. So buying and buying fee and sharing fee uh, and selling fee. When you buy shares, they will, they will charge you a fee for buying. Uh, brokers will charge you a fee for buying, and when you sell, they will do the same thing. So how much do they charge you? Easy equity charges you 0.25 percent. Uh, same for buying and selling. Uh, shift as well is 0.4 percent for buying and selling. Clarity by Invest Tech charges you nothing so far. Clarity by Invest Tech is the only platform I seem to have no fees attached to it. Uh, Frank App will charge you between 0 to 0.76 percent for buying and selling. Uh, so you need to know that. Uh, same with FNP. FNP can charge you from 0 to 2. Um, so from two so from zero to zero point two five. So buying and selling fee guys are similar to brokerage fee basically for majority of the platform. So now after guys you have seen the fees that each platform have and their usernames, you need to understand based on that are they which one is perfect for you pick one that works for me. all the list I have talked about today you need to pick the one that will work and be proper for you guys and for you basically as an individual uh, for me personally speaking i use pro stock shift um together i use them um, together as one and i have that that part one which i'm not going to talk about in this video i have another one that i use because i just love their user friendly interface that they have and also i've worked with them in different brand collaboration as well so for me guys i always disclose when i get paid for it by a platform so you know that um so after you have done all of that, look at the fees, look at the usernames, you, and also look at the customer service of each platform, guys. Go to Twitter, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, look at how each 
broker interacts with their customer because that will be helpful in terms of when you have an issue yourself will this be a broker that will be able to respond on time assist you answer your question well will respect and also to not take too long to respond you need to look into that because i had accidents or issues where i had issue with my broker platform and when i reached out to customer service it took too long to respond they responded when the market now is already closed i couldn't be able i must wait for the next day when the market will open so as well guys go look into uh, understanding the customer service of that broker you want to use that is important as well so you have done that you have picked your broker that's the first way that's the first step that you need to do when you start investing pick your broker you have done that you have picked it what's the next step because a lot of people always ask what's the next step I already picked my broker deposited a um, money into the app what must I do next for me I always say if you're new into investing the best thing to do is Go research ETF. Go understand ETF. What are ETF, guys? When we talk about ETF, we're talking about exchange traded funds. What are exchange traded funds, guys? Exchange traded funds, guys, basically are a basket of shares that's Besides the basket that has a lot of shares inside it. So when you buy that basket, you buy all the shares that are inside it. And it's the best way if you're a beginner to start investing. Why? Number one, ETF are simple to understand they are not complicated what do i mean about that you just the only thing you just need to do guys when come to research etf is to go to google put this word minimum disclosure document of a specific etf let's say you want the one for Satrix top 40 etf in the chase so you go to google you say minimum disclosure document of Satrix top 40 etf it pops up it pops up and just like that you'll be able to get all the information you need there will be the investment mandate which is simple to understand basically the, the investment mandate tells you what's the purpose of that etf it's typically just six or seven lines written in simple to understand english and secondly the minimum disclosure document will tell you which companies or which shares make up this etf for example when you look at the side tricks top 40 etf it will tell you that the top four top 10 holdings inside the etf are they'll tell you it's nespec with 13.42 percent of it of the etf being nespec it is for example Goldfield with 5.11%. It will tell you this Capitec Bank with 3.59%. It is MTN Group with, for example, 2.94%. The minimum disclosure document will tell you all of that. And also they'll tell you the ports, the, the, the performance of the camp of the ETF for the past few years or months. They'll tell you that. And also the founding information to let you guys understand the category of the ETF, understand if it pays dividends or not. It will let you guys know everything about it. So you download the, so that's what I'm saying. The second step in your investment journey is also just to start second step so is to just start with etf because it's simple the minimum disclosure document of an etf to understand it it doesn't take too long it's just two sometimes three pages and you understand that's better than going to individual companies in the jse because when you go to individual companies you need to research leadership research the financial report research this and that and that read so many articles but an etf is simple and they're cheap at the same time, ETF are cheap and deadly. You can invest into ETF in your tax-free savings account as well. So that's the second step, guys. Just pick an ETF that works for you. They are a lot. And when you're confused about which one to pick, look at the most popular ones or look at which sector you want to invest into, which sector you like. Always ask yourself, okay, I love the tech industry. Look for tech ETF in the Jay-Z or tech ETF in the New York stock market, then you'll get them. When you get them, you just go to Google again and say that specific ETF you got and you say minimum disclosure document, you get it, you get a two-page document, read it, you understand it, then you pick do you like or want to invest into this ETF. That's also the best way to pick ETF. Just look at which sector you like. You like healthcare, just go to Google. Healthcare ETF in the GZ, healthcare ETF in the New York Stock Market. You get them, look at their name, go to Google again, say minimum disclosure document of this healthcare ETF or this mining um, ETF, whatever the case may be. And that's a simple way for you guys to better understand investment. So that's the second step. Pick the ETF that works for you. That step, guys, is to. How can I put this? 
I'm trying to find a better way to put this. The third step, guys, is starting to investing into whatever market it is for yourself. Is now sitting down and look into what other investment type can you go into. As I said, the second step is to just pick an ETF. Once you have already started that and download ETF, no, not done, but already know which ETF to invest for, spend a few months researching different individual companies, right? And while doing that, also I try to understand what type of investor you are because that will determine which individual company you invest into. Don't rush, the third step, guys, don't rush into individual companies. Don't rush into shares of specific companies, ShopRite, Capitec, um, Coca Cola, Amazon, whatever it is. Don't rush them because you can fail very hugely the failure rate or the risk of individual company is so huge the third step guys please don't rush it spend time in even if it means you take four months five months take your time and pick individual company pick four of them in the beginning stage of your investment pick four or five or six but don't pick more than 10 individual companies Pick them that you know will survive for more than five years. Pick companies that you know in the next five to ten years they will still exist. There still will be a need for them. There will still be a need for them to exist. Don't pick a company because they are so innovative or they bring up something new, but there's no need for them. There's no need for that product or service they're offering. Pick company that you know will be needed. Supermarket will be needed. Banking will be needed. Healthcare will be needed. Pick companies that are playing a specific and integral part of the economy, especially if you're starting out because you don't want to invest into companies that are just new and be innovative, that you don't not show you the product or service they're offering will not survive in the next three to five years because of that case, it means that company can easily fail within a short span of time. So do that and spend your time and while doing that as well, set up a savings or an emergency account so you can be able to protect yourself as well. I know I speak a lot about emergency savings account, but I'll never stop talking about them. Pick as well sometime while doing that, create an emergency savings account to protect your investments. And I think that's it, guys. For me, I'm trying my best, trying my best to make this video so short, but I think I went too long. But I hope that information, the way I have structured everything, those three steps, will be able to help you. You can listen to some of my podcast episodes so you can understand more of the broader. But I think in a surface way, this is the best three ways for you to start investing, guys. Do ensure, guys, to leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about today's episode of the Student Investor Podcast with Ivan Sam. Until next time, guys, happy investing and be safe out there and always guys just something to add in the last as we end this video guys i'll never dm you inbox you or whatsapp you so please guys stop sending money to people that pretending to be me i'll never ask for your money i'll never ask for anything i'll never dm you at all so guys until then guys please be safe and happy investing